the last topic uh, we want to cover today is really this question of uh, domain versus generalist repositories. And this may not be uh, um, necessarily relevant to all repositories, but um, it may be coming to a neighborhood near you. So I wouldn't discount it, even if you feel like you have a, a strong hold on your community and that, that you're really the only go-to place for your particular data source, data sets. Um, and the, the, the basis for this presentation is really that the, the idea of the core trust seal certification and world data system are predicated on the notion that we are uh, focused on domain repositories where the repositories serve a specific scientific community uh, and they engage representatives of those communities and advisory groups to uh, help them curate and um, serve those data and that the repositories really have a domain knowledge. So many of uh, the heads of the repositories that we know are both data scientists and scientists in their specific domains. Now today there's the spectrum from generalist to domain repositories ranging from uh, you know places like GitHub and Dataverse and Figshare on the left hand side to um, kind of middle ground ones more like Dryad that have some uh, started maybe in a more domain area but it branched out uh, we have our own Columbia University Academic Commons, which you could say is not really domain specific, but which um, serves the Columbia University community. And I know many other universities have their own commons. Uh, then on the right hand side, of course, is the traditional WDS membership. And I listed a few that might have been feeling perhaps that some of the uh, some of their edge in this field has been eroded a little bit by uh, generalist repositories. Um, there are also generalist repositories that run underlying infrastructure services, sort of as a infrastructure service for higher data versions, CCAN are two examples of that. Um, there are some risks in, in this area of generalist repositories. One is that data could be lost, uh, and that really depends on their sustainability and commitment. As the data volumes grow, are they going to be able to continue to support open or free data hosting uh, by the community? Uh, for users, there may be risks in terms of reduced discoverability of data. Um, the data may be scattered among many generalist repositories rather than uh, one domain specific repository. Uh, what I found is that often self archived data documentation are insufficient for end users. So they just sort of dump the data with some code and they consider that to be sufficient for the end users. And then there may be a lack of QA and QC of the data uh, that are being deposited in these generalist repositories. Uh, it obviously depends on whether a journal article is associated with those data and the quality of the journal that those uh, that the data are described in. Um, finally, uh, there are risks to domain repositories. It may, these generalist repositories may propagate a perception that domain expertise and peer review of data are not really needed and it could potentially undercut sustainability of domain repositories. I'm not going to go into depth on this case study, but we have been having a discussion with our own advisor group, which is called the User Working Group for CDAC. And we've talked about how we really support this open science movement. We want to see data published in open repositories. We're excited by that. Uh, but we are running into an increasing challenge, which is that um, a lot of our potential data sources, the people who would normally deposit with us, are putting their data in domain, uh, uh, sorry, generalist repositories without really understanding the repercussions of minting a DOI for those data. Once the data have a DOI, we are unable to disseminate the data. Um, and so this is happening in part because uh, the authors uh, want to get their data out through a repository, a generalist repository in order to go through peer review, but they don't really understand the repercussions of having a DOI associated with their data set. And our response will be in the future and has been to educate authors and work with them upstream in the process to learn from authors and explore, uh, you know, why are these um, particular generalist repositories, I'm sorry, I should say why generalist repositories are very attractive in some cases uh, and maybe adopt some of their approaches that the generalist repositories are taking to, to data uh, management and then have uh, CDAC listed as a journal uh, by journals as a preferred repository for certain domain areas. 
So there are a number of responses that the WDS community might take. Um, so one is that Core Trustee, for instance, is being approached by journalist repositories and it may create a separate category for them. Uh, so I commented on some new standards that were being developed for uh, in, in discussions within Core Trust Seal about how to handle the case of generalist repositories. Uh, the um, uh, domain repositories like CDAC could also work with journals to be listed as a repository of choice for different fields of science. Um, we can also make the case to authors that if they deposit with us, that there will be higher levels of data citation, including the associated journal articles, that their reputations will be enhanced, that data reuse will increase because there may be other researchers outside their domain that will discover the data and use them, and that having the data in a larger ecosystem of similar data within a domain repository makes it easier for them to develop services based on those data. Um, so we could also just basically acknowledge that the data uh, that there's far more data that are being published in the world than can be archived by any one repository and that the trend itself is okay. So with that, I just wanted to open up for some questions, uh, with some questions and, and maybe open up the chat uh, or, or the mics um, for this discussion portion. Um, Alex, Michael, as may I respond? Um, so also uh, following up on what uh, Wim said, you know, about uh, the linkage between the core trust seal and the WDS and uh, the possible um, evaluation of fairness as being a particular uh, component of uh, WDS certification. So um, I think that uh, we need to get more yeah, transparency, you know, about the certification process to our members as well to the outside uh, in showing, you know, what is the difference and also showing, you know, the, the uh, level of uh, maturity um, for, for the different members. And in this way, um, we might also get um, uh, the mean, you know, to, to, to show uh, the difference between what you call a generalist by the way, I, I, I do not think that this term is so, is so um, really good, you know, generalist uh, repository, but um, yeah, so it doesn't matter. Um, but I think to make it a difference, yeah, also to, to our users. And uh, also uh, many publishers, they use re 3 data, you know, in order to show um, which data centers have been certified and all this and, and the certificates and so. I think it is very crucial um, that we can show the quality. Um, and the quality is um, part of this proxy, the, the uh, certification. And uh, the way how we show it to the outside, I think, and also how this finds entrance into registries like we 3 data uh, will be crucial uh, for the decision, you know, of uh, whether WDS could accept uh, the so-called generalist repositories or not. Great. Um, thank you, Michael. That, those are really insightful comments. Um, so, Vim, uh, do you want to say a word or two um, on any of your, yeah, I see you had a comment. Um, go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Alex. So, Michael, I, I agree. I think one could even go further and say that you know, if you think about the peer review process for publications, the reviewers evaluate both the methodology or the approach to the research and the, out, you know, the, the relevance or the, the value of the research that was performed. But when we, when we evaluate the criteria uh, criteria in Core Seal, we are doing it almost from a quality assurance perspective in the classical sense. So we are not interested yeah. in whether the data has some value to the end users. We are only interested in verifying that the repository checks up on this. Whereas yeah. the WDS can change its focus more towards fostering the quality of the data holdings and its usefulness to the end user community. So CTS yep. is more procedural in its review and we could focus potentially more on, on the quality of the content of the data holdings and its usefulness. 
Yeah, sure. It, it's um, it's in particular with Quattro still uh, still concentrating on the repository function. So the the long term preservation, which is something uh, that you can also achieve with uh, yeah with not so much resources, but uh, the difference here with uh, the quality data centers is that we are putting a lot of effort into data curation um, and a lot of resources. We have a lot of expertise, yeah. Um, so and and this makes a difference, but it's not uh, visible on Quattrocil on the certificate. Yeah. And it's also not visible um, when you when you have a look, you know, at the membership of, of WDS. So there's uh, that's a uh, kind of criticism here now. You know, the, the, it lacks transparency. So the request here by I think it was Wendy or so, saying, well, why can't we um, put up, you know, some of those applications for the um, um, for for new data centers to apply for for WDS. Uh, I think this should be a general feature, you know, that everybody who has applied for uh, WDS, all these applications have to be transparent online, uh, so everybody can have a, have a look at that. Yeah, I believe that, well, I mean, you know as well as I that Cortress Shield does post all of the applications, so it would essentially just be a cross-posting, I suppose. Uh, we can, you know, refer to uh, the link to their applications in in the membership list. Um, yeah, I you know if if you uh, feel that this is an issue that WDS needs to take on a bit more, I'd just encourage you to put uh, a plus one or uh, signal that in your in the chat uh, as we're closing here. Uh, I do sense that this is an important topic, but. Um, uh, we are approaching the top of the hour now, and I wanted to just thank everyone, especially our, our, our friends in Asia who have stayed on to the very bitter end uh, and have joined us till, I believe it's close to 1 a.m. their time, and, um, uh, or at least midnight. And I also want to thank our Pacific uh, Coast colleagues who started at 5 a.m. this morning. Uh, I'm sure there's some Australians and others who have come at very uh, un unconven inconvenient hours to join us. And so we want to just thank all of you for being with us. And thank you. I think this was a very fruitful discussion. I really got a lot out of it. I'm very encouraged by the level of engagement by the members. And I think we're going to need to do something like this again. So uh, thank you for um, your engagement.